Uh, gentlemen, we have uh, Ringo Starr, John Lennon, George Harrison in the room. Uh, John, there's been uh, somewhat of a dispute yesterday. It started when we learned that uh, Chicago officials had rescinded. Pardon? Chicago officials had rescinded uh, a plan uh, to have uh, the Beatles drive in front of the fans, or at least acknowledge the fans, on their visit here. And in a lot of the uh, newspapers around the country, there's been headlines like Beatles dodge their fans. And uh, really, uh, there's, a, there's another story behind it, isn't there? Well, it's usually somebody comes up and says, the police chief or so-and-so won't let you go. Jump in here and they drag us off before we even... Sometimes we don't even know fans are there at airports because they drag us off so quickly. You know, there's no time at all when we say, let's not go over there and wave. We're always prevented one way or another. Even when they allow us to wave, they give us about half a second, they just sort of shove us in and drag us out, that's it. There are times when these security me uh, measures are needed, aren't there? Yeah, but usually they go they go overboard, you know, because, I don't know, they, probably because they, they must be new to it or something. A lot of people seem to get overexcited. Well, the main point you want to bring out, in other words, is that, like many people might think, from reading the headlines and not looking behind the headlines, that it's not the Beatles' fault. It's not that you don't want to go out and see the people. Is this right? That's right, yeah. In Australia, we, we must have seen a million, million people there because they let us go. You know, there was still good security and everybody was happy, everybody was shouting, but we still saw everybody everywhere we went. Nobody got hurt and there was just as many people. You think this might be an indication of over-security uh, on the part of fear, let's say, possibly? Well, the police, or whoever it is, are probably worried, you know, but they should think about the kids as well, you know. John, uh, thank you very much. I, th I think you've explained it. Uh, one I think you did me better. Derek? Than Derek, you have something to say? Yeah, just... Well, this is well, Derek, Taylor, Derek Taylor, the Beatles press officer on this tour. I've just read one thing, uh, Larry, in the Chicago Tribune. If... Thomas Fitzpatrick, the writer, has quoted Colonel Jack Riley, the mayor's assistant, correctly. This is what Riley is quoted as saying, that our uh, announcement about our arrival here was, quote, the cheapest publicity stunt in the history of the United States. There is no purpose served in arousing, uh, announcing their arrival point. Colonel Jack Riley said to me yesterday, you, Mr. Taylor, need publicity like I need a hole in the head. I don't believe you did this for publicity. Well, and anyone who thinks we did needs a hole in the head. Uh, in fact, uh, if many of the listeners can know, and I can attest to this as, as, as well as uh, some uh, 38 other people who are traveling with the Beatles, the Axe and the Press, uh, the Beatles uh, uh, have asked that no one get hurt at these things, and uh, the Beatles are very concerned. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they don't want anybody hurt. And this business of, um, you know, let's say, the press and public officials and maybe some radio stations doing this uh, is very deceptive. And this is the reason for this discussion. It's very deceptive. But Derek? There's just one other thing I'd like to say, too, since the Beatles would never say it. Their entire lives, apart from when they sleep, and some of their sleeping time is begrudged them, their entire lives are dedicated to the fans. And any time we announce our arrival... It's so that the maximum number of fans can see them. If ever we're told not to see our fans, we complain. There's one other thing you don't know, like in Atlantic City and in New York. Uh, there were thousands who stood outside the hotel, and they were disappointed because the Beatles couldn't come out to wave. And why didn't they wave? Well, it wasn't that the Beatles didn't want to wave. I'm sure they did, and they told me they have. But it's because the police wouldn't let them. The public officials wouldn't let them. And some of these youngsters, some of these fans, young and old, have been waiting, waiting for over uh, 24 hours, in New York especially. Gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, for this explanation of uh, the situation, the current situation again. Okay, man. Thanks a lot, Larry. It's a great job, man. What a bloody shit, man.